welcome back to CGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Testarossa. Now, we start today's video with an apology. I realise I have not done a first drive video with this car, with Goodwood, the rain, and whatnot that's been going on recently. I've been very, very busy, so I've had no opportunity to take this car out and show you what it's like to drive. However, we're gonna have a little taster of it today. It's been quite a Testarossa themed video. I'm here today at Windsor View Lakes, not Ascot this time with Historics Auctions, because there is a fresh batch of cars coming out for auction this Saturday. Doors open at 8.30 a.m. and the auction starts at 9.30 a.m. However, you can come and see all the cars that I'm about to show you Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Full opening hours are on the site. However, my test horse is here. I'm just gonna show you it very quickly. Right, before we go and take you around the cars then, here is my test horse. So for many of you that missed it, I bought a test horse. And here she is. This is the first kind of drive I've had in it. Kind of the most mileage I've done in this thing and probably since I actually bought it. However, I've got a resident expert on hand and this is where we bring him in, into shot here. He was on the channel before, ladies and gentlemen. Matt is on the channel. Hello, mate. Hello, Tom. How are you? How are you doing? So many of you saw my video with the SLS where you kind of valued it and we talked about it and we went around the stock. Here today to pick your brains on Testarossas. Have I bought a good car? Is this a good idea or have I been an idiot? In this one, I think you've really stolen the market. I'm a bit of a fan of the Testarossa. I think they've been undervalued until now. And I think I'm not paying in to say I this, know, by the way. You, you've picked up the right spec. Monospecchio, single mirror, knockoff wheels, UK right-hand drive car. Ticks all of the boxes. Classy K, toolkit. Classy K is unusual on one of these as well. Toolkit's in there. How many miles have you got on the car? Uh, 23,000. Do you know what? Whilst that's not very, very few miles, I'm kind of reassured by the fact there is some miles on it because Ferraris, particularly these ones, I mean, you can wind them back with a, with a screwdriver or just by shouting at them pretty much. It's a very rudimental system and it fills me with some sort of confidence, you know, that there's documented mileage every single year. It's all on the MOTs, all on the documents. And there's also an insistence almost if you own a Ferrari that you should service it every single year, change cam belts, get the fluids around it. So it means yep. the, the engine's not been sat there seizing up in someone's collection for too long. So should be something as you've experienced you should be able to drive somewhere and actually get there as you did this morning here yeah it's actually it's literally not skipped to beat as i said i've only been in it a few times a couple of times down the king road uh fortunately or unfortunately so what you were saying then obviously the, the knock on knock off wheels whatever you call them uh, and the flying mirror this is a very collectible one apparently very collectible earlier car much nicer spec than some you'll see i think you won't tell me what you paid for it i'm sure but i think you bought a very good car very collectible probably an appreciating car as well so you're in very good stead. can we change it probably to definitely <laughs> never definite oh we don't like that we don't like uncertainty around here um, but i think to be fair it's you know it's iconic and it's it's an 80s pinup it's, it's kind of art category for me it's art grade but, you know for me my favorite car of all time is still the f40 Likewise. And I don't think I'm ever going to have an F40, but I can always aspire to get a Testarossa. And you're the lucky man that's got one. Yes, absolutely. Right, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I would spud you, but it's, it's COVID still. We're not, we haven't hit uh, Freedom Monday yet. So we're not allowed to spud each other. Uh, we'll book a meeting on Monday and we'll spud each other then. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Uh, and if you come down and check out the cars, uh, you will be around, will you no, not? We'll be here, so if you need me or any of the team, just uh, give us a shout. We'll come out, help you. Um, we, we're all here to, on hand to show you the cars we've consigned and have in this auction. But also, if you want to sell your car in the future, of course, do let us know. We'll come out with value and we'll give you advice best we can. And you don't kick people, you're actually honest, because it's a we very short-term plan, kicking people. Exactly, very honest. Even if that means disappointing you, what we'd like to tell you is exactly what we've learned, and that way you can make an educated decision. On that note then, thank you very much. I'm just gonna leave you stood there. I wasn't meant to show the shorts, and sorry, mate. Thank you very much for your, your attendance, and I'm, I'm gonna head in, if that's okay. No problem. Cheers, yeah. mate, see you later. Bye -bye. Right then, through we go into where all the cars are starting to arrive. They're pretty much all here. There's a few missing. I'm gonna go around. Oh my God, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. So there's cars in that marquee there, there's cars in that marquee, and there's some around the corner there. So I don't really know where to start, other than I'm just gonna go for the things that I like and I actually fancy a little bid on. That's very cool. It's not really me though, not yet anyway. Maybe, maybe in a few years. Right, I'm going to be predictable as ever and I'm going to pick out various cars that you probably would predict that I will pick out. And there's one car over in the marquee over there that I really want to show you, because I've spent some time with that car in Italy a few years ago, and it's good to see it again. I may even fancy a little dabble on there. So anyway, let's go then, let's go around here. I'm not going to go around every single car, there's about 180 different lots here, but surprise, surprise, I'm probably going to hone in on Porsche, and there's a couple of test rosters as well, so. No particular order then, this is a 911 SC convertible, this is a 1989 car with 37,000 miles 
on the clock that is coming up for auction very very similar to my 87 targa actually um except for the fact obviously that is a soft top this is the sc variety anyway meaning there's various tweaks over and above the standard crow which of course my 911 targa is this actually this is slightly off the beaten track for me i was actually discussing this the other day actually i think i saw the slr at goodwood and i said to myself I wonder how much those SL55s, you know the iconic kind of Clarkson SL55s, I wonder how much they are these days. Anyway, wonder no more because this one is coming up for auction. It's got a huge pan roof on it there, the amazing split wheels, obviously that absolutely ridiculous supercharged V8 engine. And I think these cars are in modern classic territory already. Really, really cool car. I remember being in awe of these when they came out absolutely love that and they're looking better with age now they went through a little period of looking a bit dated but i think that is a lot of car for the cash anyway full details of course are online on the historic site so come with me then come with me i mean there's some ridiculous stuff here some ridiculous ridiculous stuff as i say i'm not going to point out everything we're going to be here all week otherwise here we go here's a 355 gts with your toolkit your cover your spare head unit and all the bits and bobs that come with these cars often laid out with them six speed manual box in the gts this car actually came around as a result of ferrari almost apologizing for the mondial and the kind of the dismal damp squib that was the v8 mondial so this the 355 gts was pretty much the benchmark at the time blistering performance even by today's standards and obviously sounds absolutely ridiculous and this particular variant has that kind of very cool targa top on there as well which obviously comes off I mean, you can hear more of that V8. Love, love, love these. This is obviously a right-hand drive car as well. Pin and Freela, lovely. I think this was the very close second to my Testarossa purchase, was the 355, and indeed, many of you are still telling me I should have bought one of these. Anyway, if you want one of them, that's coming out for auction. Now, getting more predictable again, this 993 Carrera S. This is the two-wheel drive variant. It is a right-hand drive car, and I believe it's been with the same owner I was reading earlier, since 2007 18 stamps in the book meticulously looked after and about 60 odd thousand miles on the clock that is a bit of me ladies and gentlemen and it's also got the all-important tin top convertible roof i just love these absolutely love these i think it's probably one of the best behinds of any 911 they've ever made there is a 993 shaped hole in my garage so i may have a little wibble on this one i can't remember the color i don't know if this is arena red whatever it is i love the color we're on the flight path here do apologize we've just been filming a podcast and uh heathrow wouldn't stop the planes for us very rude of them so yeah absolutely love 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 that that is very much in the maybe camp audi quattro there iconic iconic vehicle again full details obviously are online about that car but that does look good doesn't it more of it me though that right coming around then let's look at more porsches and ferraris everyone i know you're probably all shouting saying well, i'm not gonna mustang or whatever but right we've got two test rosters in this auction as i mentioned at the start we've got this one here which is a slightly more leggy left-hand drive variant and this is a test roster for those that want to just get out and drive take it on road trips and put some serious serious miles on it so this particular variant as i said is left-hand drive it's actually got i think coyo interior not crema like mine so slightly more kind of caramelly color you've got the five bolt wheels not the mono uh, knock on knock off wheels whatever you call them and it's obviously got two wing mirrors as well other than that it is a g reg so it's slightly newer than my testarossa and the odometer actually reads 109,000 kilometers so very much a well used car but serviced properly and looked after properly, these things will go around the clock quite happily. It's pretty bulletproof engine actually in there. So if you're looking for a usable Testarossa that you can literally stick as many miles as you want on, this is probably your car. And the estimate on this is between, I think, 65 and 75 thousand pounds at the point at which I uh, read the little bump on the internet. So uh, not a lot of money for a Testarossa. Iconic, iconic piece of machinery. Now, We've also got a 1977 911 Turbo here. So this is an earlier 911 Turbo. It is a left-hand drive. But what you'll notice is this color combo here. Yes, this has been restored, but this is actually the original colorway on this car. This is the original colorway the car came with and it's been lovely restored to a very, very high standard. My favorite thing about this, 
and without sounding basic the decals on the back there you just would not get away with that on any other car other than this it gets better inside because then you pick that up it's brown in there with kind of yellowy cream writing on the inside there as well so it's obviously a left-hand drive but it's a three liter turbo very 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 cool car and again i'm hugely hugely tempted to get bidding on this how cool is that really really high standard car the finish inside is absolutely incredible it's been restored properly properly in there and externally as well it looks absolutely bob on mileage isn't too crazy on this one either the mileage is actually pretty decent love it that wing's mental anyway come with me then i really like these as well i'm getting into sls i don't know what's wrong with me maybe i'm getting old ladies and gents but that is a very cool good old boy we've got loads of other cool stuff here oh, it's chaos imagine batting around in that morris minor bedlam fiat 500 we've got a mondial haven't been speaking about them earlier still cool pin and farina badge can't go that far wrong i found another porsche over here sorry about that oh ford escort rs if lenny was here he'd be drooling over this i'm sure he doesn't watch my videos but i'll send him a whatsapp picture of this one escort rs turbo that is mega love that anyway that's not why i came to see i was distracted by this we've got a 944s here so this is the non-turbo variant obviously i've got the turboed variant the 944s turbo um which is actually giving away with classic giveaways but this is a solid white i believe with dark blue interior that's a very nice combo in there can't really see can you see that now manual box 944s and i think the estimate on this is about 16k maybe thereabouts that's a cool car that is a cool car ladies and gentlemen right let's go in the tents then come with me in my clod hoppers these are the worst shoes ever by the way for driving a testosterone you have to almost drive with the side of your foot i do have a yearning for a little rally car italian thing so maybe a lancia or an alpha there is an alpha junior as well 1.3 i saw it there a little while ago that i'm actually quite tempted to get as well so coming in here then we've got a tbr i'm not quite brave enough for a tbr however in here we've got a targa s C and it's rather nice colorway. I believe this particular car it's got less than 40,000 on the clock as well. Very nicely presented car. Love a Targa. So we've got a 348 Spider here. And the car that I actually came to see in here this is a car that I saw on the Best of Italy race back when I drove the BAC Mono, no pun intended in italy i think one of the race organizers was driving this this very car uh, a couple of years ago it is effectively a single seater conversion maserati i believe and i remember thinking that is absolute havoc when i saw it you've also got a second seat in there which is kind of a smaller bucket seat enabling you much like the monza sp1 to cover that bit up there um, but you've effectively you can take that out and you've got a two-seater race car that is really really cool i actually don't know any of the details on this i'm going completely cold on this other than the fact i recognize the car it's obviously a manual box and i believe it's probably got a maserati v8 in it i mean that's havoc imagine just batting down the king's road on that brilliant i might have a little dabble with that so i'm going to do some reading have a look at this look at it please if i don't buy it please one of you buy this this is pure havoc and this was built way, way, way before the Monza SP1 and SP2. Perhaps Ferrari saw this and thought, that looks like a good idea. We're going to build one ourselves, but really, really cool looking car. Love that. All sorts of off-road mayhem in here as well, including this old series Land Rover. Again, there is too much to go through. There really is too much to go through in this place in one video. But I just thought I'd give you a little taste. We're going to head over there, finally. We're gonna look for Vicky Butler Henderson as well. I may well shove the camera in her face. She's in there, she's doing some presenting and taking people around for a slightly more professional look at some of these cars. Rather chaotically, that is a Renault Aventime. They are mayhem. I remember my neighbor had one of those when I was a kid and I just couldn't get my head around it. Look at the size of that door. It's a family car, but with one door. 
Whatever you think of it, this was a trailblazer in design and the pan roof on it was well ahead of its time as well. It's literally like sitting outside in there. You see the glass roof? It's utterly nuts. I don't know how Renault got away with building this back in 2002 when these were being punted out. They didn't sell that many in the UK. That's actually a really rare car. Part of my neighbors, that's the only other one I've ever seen. Might be my neighbors actually. Anyway, popping in here then, it gets quite spicy in here. We've got a couple of listers here. We've got this one, and we've also got a convertible one over there as well. Chaotic, chaotic things. I absolutely love these. Mayhem on four wheels. Now, here we've got the other Testarossa in here. We have got them. This version, which has just benefited from an 11,000 pound service, there's about 18,000 miles on the clock, and it is a right-hand drive. In exactly the same colorway as my car, Rosso with a crema. This particular variant, I believe, has lightweight wheels, and they've actually color-coded the front splitter there, and obviously round the side as well. I think that actually makes the car look a lot better. It was something I was mooting doing to mine. Obviously, it's got the two mirrors as well, but this is a very, very nice example indeed. Loads of history, fully sorted, amazing condition, and the estimate on this, I believe, is about 140 to 160, thereabouts. Can't remember off the top of my head, but it's in that region. Anyway, for full details, go and hit up the site. And of course, like any of these cars, you can come around and look at them in person prior to the auction, which is this Saturday. So you can look at any of these cars in person, grab one of the guys here, the auction negotiators, one of the experts, and they will talk you through the car. They'll take you around the paperwork, which actually is in that section over there. They've got all the files for all the cars and they'll take you through absolutely everything. So it's well worth coming down, having a little poke around. Anyway, speaking of poking around, the poking around continues. We've got some beautiful old Jags. And there is a familiar face up here. Let's go and harass her quickly. She's actually filming the full video that Vicky is actually filming. Hello, Vicky. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, sorry, I'm interrupting you here. So the full video that Vicky is actually filming for Historics, going around all these cars in proper depth with some proper knowledge, is on the Historics channel. You're actually standing by this now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna test you. What is this? What have we got here? This is a 1961 Chevrolet Corvette C1. And interestingly, well, I think it's interesting, um, at the Goodwood Festival of Speed just a few days ago, I helped to unveil the right-hand drive Corvette C8. Ah. The so that's 60 years on, and this is what happened so when it originally came about. Perfect. Did you drive the C8? I didn't, know. I've driven the left-hand drive version around, uh, I think it was Regent's Park at 20 miles an hour. A very insightful review <laughs> on my channel. Yeah, no, no idea what's going on. This Brilliant. is very cool. Estimate, do we know? We do know it is. Let me just check my notes. On this one, I've done so many different numbers today. Between 59 and 68,000 pounds. Wonderful stuff. Right, I'm going to let you get on with it anyway. But Vicky is now on YouTube, are you not? I am, yes. The car girl, Vicky Henderson. The car girl, Vicky Butler Henderson. So make sure you go and subscribe to her channel. There'll be some proper content on there. And like the, uh, the drivel that I knock out. Anyway, I'll let you get on with it. You've got some proper things to be doing. Thank you very much. Old Audi. Is that an Audi? Chaos. Or what used to be Audi? I don't know, someone shout at me and tell me what that was. Old Vantage V8. Love these. When Vantages were proper cars, I'm not really sure anymore. I'm pretty sure they're just Mercs. And we've got this incredible Ford here as well. That is bonkers. Fuel cap there. Rivets inside. I don't know if you can see all this. Look at that. Engine poking through. That is mega. I kind of regret coming here because it just gets expensive. I just start adding things in my mind to my list. I got a fully sorted Pagoda there as well. Love these, these are going through the roof in value. And if you look at the 300 SLs and what they're doing, these things are just gonna keep going and going and going, albeit not as rare. And there are a lot of them around and a lot more kind of coming back onto the road, obviously with loads of them being recommissioned. Um, but a fully sorted one of these is never ever a bad idea. Right and drive, manual box. I mean, that is literally like new in there. I think then that is that. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, if you like the look of any of these cars, you can come and view them ahead of the auction this Saturday. You can come down in person and take a look around. There's plenty more lots that of course I didn't have time to go around. Come down, take a look and get bidding and try not to bid on anything that I'm going to be bidding on. For now, thank you so much for watching 
and do also check out the podcast that I have just recorded here with Vicky Butler Henderson and one of their experts here, Matthew at Historics. For now, I'll see you all very soon. Ciao.